Good morning, everybody. It's 9 o'clock, and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. Today we celebrate the Annunciation of the Lord, and uh, uh, the text in the Gospel is taken from Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. I hope you'll open your Bibles and read that. Uh, so the good thing would be to stop the video right now, read the text, and then go on to the reflection. I'm doing this so that I encourage you to read the text. Reading the text is a very, very important part of Bible study, reading it quietly, reading it with a pencil, reading it again and again till the words speak to you. Now somewhere in the loud voice of the church projecting over the centuries, that very, very big yes of Mary was really an adolescent girl. And I think our Blessed Mother, when she first saw the angel, was completely terrified. Um, I think our young people would have said, she was not just terrified, she was freaked out. Now, we have in many ways romanticized over several centuries the yes of Mary, the fiat. Fiat is the Latin word for yes. And uh, in doing that, I think sometimes we've taken away from her uh, the overwhelmingly uh, shocking fear of just finding an angel in her bedroom. I say that because um, Several years ago, I came across a beautiful painting of the Annunciation in the bedroom of Our Lady and I thought, uh, what a nice thought that was. Imagine finding an angel in your bedroom or an angel in your kitchen. Uh, my mother always has um, some images of our Blessed Mother uh, in her kitchen or the saints or the angels or Christ in her kitchen. She puts them all up there. She has little mini altars everywhere in the house. But imagine... Um, Gabriel coming to you tomorrow in your bedroom or a kitchen or wherever you are. Now, the presence of the angel was really big news for Mary. And I think it would take a lot more than um, <laughs> when the, the angel must have said, you know, I think you need to sit down and listen to this one Mary because this message is going to knock you off your feet. Literally, so sit down. That's why we say, uh, sit, it's going to knock you off your feet. And yet, from this very ordinary, simple Jewish girl, this Jewish maiden, comes a yes. And what a powerful yes that was. Because that yes gave you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, our Redeemer. Yeah, that's so fantastic. Imagine, I want you to pause and think about it. That yes gave us the one who would save us from our sins. Imagine if your whole life hinged on somebody else's yes. Yeah? Your life being saved depended on some, it's like you have a loved one in hospital, a surgery needs to be done, a doctor is una uh, unavailable and you're pleading of that doctor and the life of your loved one depends upon the yes of that doctor and he says yes. In Jesus and Mary's case, it was a million times more. The little yes of mess that we, or the little yes of Mary gave us such a big a redeemer. Now, was it easy for Mary to say yes? Because we, as I said, we romanticize the yes. Was it bless? Uh, was it easy for our blessed mother to simply say yes? Sometimes I wonder did at that moment she completely understand what was even going on. So I don't want to rob our Blessed Mother of her human emotions and to rob her of her feelings because I think to take that all away and say, oh, she said yes and you know she was in a moment of ecstasy would do her a grave injustice to her and to us. We usually tend often when we read the story of the Annunciation, the narration of the Annunciation, we tend to get to the end of the story where everything is hunky-dory, she says yes and now we've got a saviour. But what about the beginning? You see, this, this narrative begins by telling us that the angel says to her, do not be afraid because she was afraid. And I guess that was putting it mildly. Yeah? As I said earlier, she should have been completely freaked out. Because that's what happens when you suddenly find uh, an angel in your house. And not only that, the angel says, 
guess what? You're going to be pregnant. And guess what? It's going to be an immaculate conception. And guess what? Uh, promises of, of a great son of the Most High uh, who will get the throne of his ancestor David uh, is going to be belong to this child. And then here's the other uh, questions. What are you going to tell your fiancé Joseph? What are you going to tell your parents? How are the neighbors going to see this news? And God knows who else will have an opinion about what is about to happen. So sometimes, you know, when people get news, they always say, my gosh, Father, that was the longest five minutes in my life. And I think that must have been the longest five minutes in her life. Especially when the angel, if you see the text, is doing all the talking and she barely responds. Yet, she has only two responses. She has only two interjections in that uh, conversation that the angel makes with her. And those two conversations, those two interjections that she makes reflects her perplexity. How will this come about since I'm a virgin? But then it reflects her surrender. And this is what should give you and me, my dear friends, strength when we look at Mary. To find encouragement knowing that you and I too are afraid. We are afraid of life. We are afraid of what may happen tomorrow. We are afraid of the many, many demands that God makes from our life including the death of a loved one, the illness of a loved one, or our own illness, our own impending death. Those are demands that God makes from us. And I can tell you, I have not seen an angel in my bedroom. I wish God did, but I don't know whether I'm asking for too much. It sounds very nice because when God asks for, sends an angel, there's always a demand. So, okay, I should take that back a bit. I'm not entirely ready for an angel in my bedroom, uh, but I have not definitely seen an angel in my bedroom. But at the same time, I cannot deny the many callings that Jesus has made to me and I hope to you to serve him. The many times that he will challenge you and me, the many times that he will call us to obedience. And am I afraid? Should you be afraid? Yes, of course you should be afraid. Yes, of course I should be afraid. Because we know that God's calls, God's challenges to us usually come with a crown of thorns. Yeah. Um, remember, it's always the cross first and the crown of glory later. And if you get a crown also, that might have thorns in it. So, should we be afraid when God um, makes a demand? I can understand the fear. Let me put it that way. I can understand the fear. But then, like our Blessed Mother, you and I must find strength also to say, Lord, I don't completely understand your will, but I want to be your faithful disciple. You see, our Blessed Mother didn't get it all at once. She didn't say yes and everything was given to her. Faith, hope, charity, love, everything was poured into her. Of course, she already had it in her. But what I'm trying to show you is that on the human side, she had to learn it. She had to learn discipleship. One experience at a time. So, uh, don't be fooled by those many beautiful sculptures or paintings, those Renaissance paintings that you might have a copy of it somewhere on your altar or somewhere in your room. Or don't be fooled by those lovely paintings because in those paintings she is always out of great honor depicted very serenely and enrobed in uh, those beautiful uh, silks. Mary most certainly did not have it easy. She no doubt faced the ridicule of the village the doubt of her fiancé, surely at the back of his mind, Joseph must have been thinking, and we know that because he wanted to divorce her, although in private, so as to save her the embarrassment, he wanted to do that. We cannot deny the long road 
on a donkey nine months into your pregnancy all the way to Bethlehem. She had to learn that too, and saying yes to that calling too. Then that fearful flight into Egypt that turned her, her husband and a newborn child into refugees in a second. And our Blessed Mother is with every single refugee who walks that road of panic. And then also the panic of losing her own son in a crowd. She experienced that pain for three days. Her heart must have been aching and she must have had many, many tears. Must have said, what have I done? God entrusted me with a son and here I have lost him for three days. And the most painful of her sufferings, seeing your own son, the one that you raised, the one that you loved, the one that you cared for, die on a cross. And yet she surrendered. That's why she's the first of all disciples, the Queen of Heaven. No title of honor is ever sufficient for this wonderful mother of ours. You see, the angel had made our Blessed Mother a promise. Nothing is impossible to God. That's the words that we hear on the day, Feast of the Annunciation. For nothing is impossible to God. And she believed it. She experienced it in her life. You know, Jesus acknowledged his mother, not merely for her being his mother, but for being primarily a disciple. For him, that came first, that she was his d disciple. To many, as we will find in the text in Luke chapter 11, verse 28 to 29, there's a woman who seems to call Mary lucky. You are lucky to be the mother of Jesus. Lucky to have borne him. Lucky to have suckled him. How blessed you are. Jesus' response to that woman is swift and clear. She is not lucky. She has earned her stripes of discipleship. She is blessed because she heard God's word, fearful as she was at the Annunciation, and yet she surrendered. She is blessed because she permits her role as mother to take a back seat over her role as a disciple. She is blessed because she had the courage to stand at the foot of the cross and yet believe in the angel's promise that Jesus would rule over the house of David, watching her own son die. That is a tough woman and that is an amazing disciple and that's why she has the privilege to point us to Jesus and say, do whatever he asks you. I pray that our Blessed Mother may truly bless you. I um, Yesterday was my birthday. Thank you all for your wishes. I feel very happy to have, not happy, sorry, I feel blessed to have the Feast of the Annunciation one day after my birthday. It's like Mother Mary saying, I've got your back. I'm just one day after the day you were born, I've got your back. Yeah, this is the day you were born, Warner, on the 24th, and I conceived Jesus on the 25th. I've got your back. We both got your back. And what a consolation that is. Today, you can also celebrate um, what I call a little Christmas because today the word became flesh. And I want to pray today for all mothers that you may honor that little child in your womb. Never in moments of doubt and frustration give up that child, abort that child. Find somebody who can truly guide you. The world has its own compass of guidance but that may not be a moral compass. And very often, in difficult moments, we think to ourselves, let's listen to reason, as if the church is opposed to reason. St. John Paul II wrote, Rashua et Fides, faith and reason, they go hand in hand. We cannot have a faith that's unreasonable. So the church doesn't give you an unreasonable proposition. I pray for you, for those of you who have had an abortion, forced to have an abortion, are contemplating one. Mary said yes, 
say yes to life. I plead of you, I beg of you, say yes to life. And uh, I want to thank you for your prayers for me yesterday, your good wishes. As some of you know, I am in Goa. I came here uh, on the 23rd. Um, and um, I'm here because my sister, Sharida, and uh, my niece have come down after two and a half years. And it's lovely to be home with mum, dad, Sienna, Sharida. We're missing uh, my brother-in-law, Craig, my brother and his wife who are still in New Zealand. And maybe, God willing, we'll all be a family soon once again uh, to be able to meet each other. So happy feast, everybody. And I want to give you a blessing on this very, very happy day. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day. I hope you enjoyed this teaching. I enjoyed teaching uh, the Word of God to you, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it too. So please like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that, leave a comment for us. And to all of you who continue to care for the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation, and I say this every day, because I am truly grateful for your love, for your kindness, for your charity to the, towards these children. It is principally, if I may say, through this ministry that I do each morning that we are able to take care of this home and you are the people who make that happen. God bless you.